Cases of fire incidents continue to be reported almost every day in different parts of the city of Johannesburg, although some would argue that this is uh, usual, you know, during the winter season. Surely something needs to be done to fight the surge in fire incidents. As they say, they claim lives, injure people and leave many without homes. Hi, so good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Joining us tonight is Koli Kumalo, who is the Johannesburg Emergency Services spokesperson. And she's here to talk to us about the surge, you know, of um, emergency incidents that have happened in the Gauteng province this uh, winter season. Koli thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Mr. Molokwane. Thank you for the invitation. Much appreciated. You know, I want us to... Uh, before we can start with uh, the um, incidents that happened this past few weeks, okay. particularly in uh, George Koch, uh, you know, um, let's talk about the work that you do um, as EMS. Normally, um, you know, you respond to a lot of situations, but besides fire, what is it that you usually do as EMS? Um, it's a lot, it's a lot of duties really. It could be um, rescuing somebody who is stuck in a vehicle that um, was involved in a road incident, like if they are trapped, we are there, we remove them or release them or bring them to safety. It could be somebody who's stuck in a flood. We've got a flood unit, um, an emergency unit that just deals with water. Um, we would just do general rescues. People are stuck in their homes because like recently we've felt tremors, but in Johannesburg it didn't affect us mostly, but in situations like that we are there as well. Because I, I wanted to ask, I mean, there's quite a lot of people that will, you know, would talk about the issues of jaws of life, uh, that it's being used then. And as you said, we saw the recent incident they um, you know in johannesburg with tremors and stuff the issue of uh, the gas explosion also yes. in the city of jo joburg yes quite a lot of people were not affected but we saw one person dying in that incident normally how do you respond to such situations okay so the incident mostly um it was um taken care of by the city of Joburg because as much as we are the city of Joburg we fall under a bigger administration yes so that part was handled by the city of Johannesburg but emergency management services were there as well so you need to um, basically the moment the incident gets reported to you you need to ensure that the area is secured where the actual incident happened at secured people are not walking around mm. where the incident was reported. But with us, um, I'm not sure what happens with um, the citizens of Joburg. I, I think it's the, the hype of media. Yeah. Um, everybody just wants to be in the now. They want to be taking pictures. They want to be recording videos and sending to media or, or sending to people at home and that um, endangers, it will put your life in danger. So in cases, I'm, I'm, I'm actually straying away from your question, but it's yeah. quite relevant. In cases like that, in cases of emergencies like that, please, if you can't assist in that situation, if you're not involved, if you're not part of the security, JMPD, um, emergency management services, HESMED, Stay away. Stay away. Yes. For your safety. For your safety, yes. How, let's talk about the incident in uh, George Koch. Uh, you know, we saw a fire incident there this past weekend. What happened there? How many shacks were affected? Uh, was it the only incident that happened uh, during the winter period? No, Tabo, not at all. It's not the only incident. In George Koch this weekend, unfortunately, one adult male um, succumbed to fire injuries. Um, it's not the only incident. About three shakes were gathered down by fire um, in George Koch. But everybody else was, um, EMS was able to bring them to safety. Um, no other casualties were reported. Yeah. But it's one that too many, hey? Mm. Um, it's one that too many. You said, is it the only incident this winter? No, we've had quite a few. In the same weekend, um, 
Kayasens as well. I'm not quite sure which um, informal settlement there, but we had an incident there as well. But nobody died, fortunately, but one person suffered um, bad uh, um, fire wounds, um, fire burns, and was transported to hospital. They, it's a constant thing. It's a constant thing. I don't know what is it that our community um, is, is not hearing because we are out there, we, we are educating, we run door-to-door -door campaigns, we're at the malls, we're distributing fires, we, um, pamphlets yeah. to, to the community um, about safety. You know, like how to prevent fires, what to do in case it does that in your home, how not to leave dangerous substances exposed so that the kids can't access them. It's a lot. It's a lot. But Judge Koch was not the only incident. Um, your immediate response from EMS after finding maybe a dead body or an incident, normally how do you approach such a situation, particularly if, uh, you know, um, a, a lot of shacks maybe caught fire? And how do you respond to that? And normally, what is it that you do when you get to the scene? Okay, so now it will, it will depend. We get a call um, that there's a fire in George Koch. Um, the team rushes there. So we get there, we do a, pre a preliminary investigation, just an assessment, um, somebody who's seen, or somebody who, the actual person who reported the fire, um, we need the information of the, the place, um, so the way yeah. it started. How big is it? How many people were in the house? Is everybody accounted for? You do that assessment and the team is already gathering um, the, the equipment to actually um, move to, to, to extinguish the fire. But you, you also need to, to see where the wind is blowing. Like is it blowing from east to west? You need to know where do you actually start with your fire um, extinguishing. Um, you. If it's moving, um, let me paint, paint a scenario. If it's moving from east to west, you start to the from the part where it's moving to. If you see that there are a lot of shakes, for an example, in the way, you can um, destroy those, demolish those um, shakes so that the fire does not continue to spread. We will um, continue with the discussion after the ad break. Let us take a quick breather. We're coming back right after this. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwani. We're still in conversation with uh, Kolile Kumalo, who is from the Johannesburg Emergency Management Services. And she's here to talk to us about the increase in fire incidents across the city. She's still joining us in studio. Kolile, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, you highlighted quite a lot of information about the work that you do as EMS. I want us to look at uh, how many fire stations you have in Johannesburg. And um, would you say that uh, they are well resourced? I mean, um, you know, the last time when you were here, we did touch on the issue of resources, particularly in fire stations. You said that, you know, we can't say that um, uh, we've got everything, We, you know, as time goes on, we still need new equipment, more things, more fleet, all these kind of things. Are you well resourced as a fire station in Johannesburg to quell this fire incident? Okay, so um, Tabo, I'd right, like to go back to your previous questions just before your viewers at home get confused. As much as I painted that scenario saying that we followed the wind, the movement of the wind, but in cases where now you say even if the wind is moving from east to west, but then someone says that um, there is a person trapped on the eastern side of the fire. You can't just rush to where the wind is moving. Obviously, you have to start by putting out the fire from the east. So it really depends on, on different scenarios. So that person won't be burned by the fire since you are starting from yes, the Yes, you bank. have to start. Like if they say there's a person trapped, you start to where there the is person a person is. is trapped, yes. Um, We've got 29 fully functional fire stations to answer your questions in the city of Johannesburg. Um, 
soon to be 30 with the central fire station that's going to be opened um, hopefully by the end of this year, end of 2023. Look, um, we have enough um, equipment and um, fire vehicles. Um, as I said last, we, we could use more, but uh, people, the problem is they concentrate on fire engines. It's a vast number of, 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 of um, fire vehicles that we have. Um, mm. So you've got your skid, you've got your water tanker, you've got your fire engine. So it, it, what we do is with the resources that we have, in winter, for an example, we ensure that the um, equipment that we have, we strategically position it in the areas that are usually um, suffer or experience a lot of fires than the others. So we, we can't really say that this shortage is um, affecting us badly in any way. I mean, you are speaking also about the issue of the central, um, um, you know, um, let me say a central command um, normally how does it work I know that you've got a central command whereby the calls uh, get dispatched in uh, you know I, I don't know how does it work do people call in and it goes to the central command team first before it gets de de dispatched yes to, our to EMS the, yeah. call, control center yeah. yes it, it that all calls go to them we've got dispatches there on call 24 hours Yes, it's called the control. The control. Yeah, the control room. So normally, how does it work? You have a fire at your house. You manage to move to safety or free, um, try to rescue anyone that you can safely, and you get to a safe clearing. You call us. Mm. Um, the number that people should call um, Maybe should one experience an emergency, you know, just to rescue themselves from potential harm. What is it? I mean, we've had a lot of situations with, um, obviously I know that you won't be answering that one, uh, the number of the 10 triple one recently with, uh, you know, the emergency number also in the city of Tswane there. We once had an issue here in, 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 in Joburg also, okay. whereby the number was a bit down and people uh, could not, um, you know, make calls to um, the emergency units, be it the ambulances or, or the fire department. Normally, what happens when the system is down from EMS? How do you respond to situations? Um, so, I'm not smiling, actually. Tabo, it's the shock that makes me move my, my face in that direction. In South Africa, we don't have 10 triple one. We mm. don't use that. The number that you should dial from your cell phone is double one two one one two from your cell phone. Mm. It's free of charge. The other number is 10 one seven seven. So it's one zero one double seven. And we have a landline as well for those people who use a landline, but you can also dial it from a cell phone, which is 011-375-5911. You can reach us on those numbers. So, I mean, does it say that people actually do not know about these numbers? Because people would say that, as you're saying, that uh, it's shocking that uh, people still refer to the number of 10 triple one and stuff, which is non-existent at this stage. But why are people struggling to get the actual numbers from EMS. Is it that you're not doing enough advocacy uh, from EMS perspective? Yes, you are going in and doing a lot of training to communities and stuff, but why does it seem like people struggle sometimes to you know, get response from EMS? It is, it's, it's well published, it's everywhere. We even have buses are from Metro Bus um, that um, have our logo and the, the emergency numbers painted or splashed on them. We, we've got fire stations in most, like uh, whole seven regions of, of, of Johannesburg. I am not really sure what it is um, that or maybe people get shocked in the situation and they start dialing a wrong number. 
but it is it is out there. And the, another thing is, since um, EMS is a public facility, anyone is always welcome. Just walk in there, get a pamphlet, save the number. You'll be shocked. Like even now, if we, we if we do the door to door campaigns, because you ask the people, in case of a fire mm. at home, what do you do? Who would you call? The don't residents know. don't know. Really shocking. One one two. Is the number <laughs> to call one to reach two. us it's on. free it's free of charge it's free. Let, before we go to the ad break i want us to talk about the cold season which is ending uh we know that we are approaching spring and stuff obviously you know there's quite there's going to be a lot obviously during spring every season has got its own challenges and 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 stuff let's emphasize the importance of taking precaution uh you know uh, so that you can avoid more emergency situations as an individual, we are approaching spring. People will be heading to the pools. They'll be playing with water. Some will try to do canoeing at different, uh, you know, rivers and stuff. And we'll have a lot of rain that will be coming through. What would be the safety tips? Canoeing is an excellent sport. Um, but if you can't use water, if you can't handle yourself, if you've never been trained and you don't have any supervision around you, stay away, be a spectator. Do not get into water if you don't know how to swim. So with the kids at home who are still growing, um, it is advisable that the parents do teach their kids how to swim so that um, they are able to face any eventuality that they may come across. We will um, uh, unpack that one. I want us to expand more on the tips, particularly, you know, uh, last time we did speak about uh, what is it that you need to do. It's still cold. Uh, currently so people will still try to you know get heat either way so please just give us those tips after the ad break we're coming back after this do stay with us welcome back you're still watching so it's today thank you for choosing to stay with us we are about to wrap up the conversation today on the surge in fire cases summit uh, the winter season with uh, GM, uh, you know, uh, Johannesburg EMS uh, spokesperson Kolile Kumalo, who's still uh, joining us here in studio. Um, Kolile, I, I want us to talk about the winter safety awareness campaign that was launched at the George Koch uh, Hostel in May uh, of this year. Which areas was it targeted uh, for, and how helpful has it been, particularly to do such awareness campaigns? Okay, so um, yes, we did go to George Goch, the inner city, in um, some time last month, but the campaign was actually launched in Zanspreit in the beginning of May. The areas that um, it targets, um, as we I said previously, it's areas that experience a lot of fire in yeah. winter. So your Zanspreit, where it actually was launched, uh, Zen Spread, we've been to Kaya Sands, we've been to Alexandra the past weekend. Um, yesterday we were at Deep Sloot, and um, the next weekend or the next coming two weekends we'll be going to Orange Farm. And we've been we've been to Doran Coop, which is formerly Snake Park. Yeah. And we will also go to Elidus Park. So mostly areas like that 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 experience a lot of fires in winter. Is it going to is it going to continue throughout the year? It usually um, take it takes place during winter because, as you know, seasons change and we move to different um, activities in summer, as you mentioned before, um, people swimming and canoeing. So we move to water safety next month. Mm. Um, what is the Johannesburg EMS doing to help the victims? of uh, a fire disaster. Uh, is there some sort of way that uh, you are able to engage with uh, other stakeholders within your department to assist the people that may have lost their homes, uh, their belongings and so forth? Okay, so our main responsibility is um, just bring the people to safety, rescue services, right? But we do have a department in 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 here, in public safety, which is the disaster management, which handles that part of the of of of, of the. We come in, we rescue people, we bring them to safety, then um, disaster management soups in. Um, so they're responsible for providing like. Um, 
any usable material yeah. that they have lost, your mattresses, food, uh, together with, and like they usually work with um, Department of Settlements and the province or Social any volunteering non-profit organization. Yes, yeah, so that is their responsibility. Okay, let's, you know, let's talk about the tips now. We know that it's still cold. People are now asking themselves, I mean, winter is a poor, I mean, it's, 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 it's done now. Um, but we're still experiencing those lower temperatures. It's still a bit cold. People will try to, you know, heat uh, their households, try to get uh, the necessary heat, uh, you know, if possible, just to make sure that uh, they become warm. What would be the safety tips that you would give to those people? Um, Tabo, yes, yeah, I, I, sometimes in visiting it in Champe, Nalis is in this is Colomayo, as you see, as Finia Lady lies for no good to see, see, figure con. Bantu Bagit, Bantu Emma Kayas and in Musa, see an itela. Icandela, Lingos, Lingabogan, and Jelim, Sula Lisa Lela, Pecon, and Lim Sope. Can you see the please? Yenza show who go to Uyal Tima. Even as Kinsa was so good, we are Tima before Uyolal. Unga laiti in Baula, Uybasabes, we she and Lin, and go by Lel Kunga Dalum, Monagalo, Umkuluga cool. Footige, Kuno Wenze, Bengi, Bengi, Bengaban, and Sasaleka, would see illo shedding Yawens, would see Yak Doma, Gasse, go by. Ubupegil, our Sakumbul, which is Tofusi on, we are Began isn't as in your Zenza, you call her which is Tofusi on. By the time of Gesubuya, Yashin Kumbulani, even if you have to place a note on your door, on your bedroom door, switch off, switch off, switch off, switch off, appliances, Tima, 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 Ninga Lali Nazo, Zibungo Ziga Kul, Zivulegil, Amahita. Yeah. The non-regulated stoves. People are using it tofu as in regulated by the, 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 the authority or by the body. When the spiral less the same. Yeah, you need to plug. Yeah. So, but at a e, let's spiral, let's say to say to plate. It's it's connected to a plug, and then they will place it on a spade or on any metal surface, and then they cook on that. As much as it does help the means to an end, um, we are pega. Kota ubungozi obulapo angeke ngwazi ukuthi ngibume ngibume ngikhulume ngabo ningasebenzisi izinto ezinjalo ezingekho regulated if ngasesi stove esithenga isitolo akusona isitofu mhlambe wena ucaye utshele ukuthi usithenge isitolo kodwa ibukisise kahle le nto le inobungozi kuwe just give us that number very quickly 112 1017375 that's Those okay. are the numbers that you can reach us on, that you can reach EMS on. Kulile, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us uh, tonight. Thank you, Tabo. Much appreciated. 112 is the number. I mean, you can dial it from your cell phone very quick. It will get you straight to uh, the relevant people there. That was uh, Kulile Kumalo from the Johannesburg Emergency Management Services talking to us about the increase in the number of fire incidents during the winter season and also just giving us the tips on how to stay warm safely for the rest of the cold season. Well, that's how we wrap it up uh, for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email. Hit Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call WhatsApp at 081-531-8857. For myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.